Deploying a database from bids to a server is commonly done when we're working within a development or test environment. But when we move to a production environment, usually the developers do not have direct access to the server. Instead, an administrator is given the files that are necessary to deploy. For analysis services, there's a deployment wizard to simplify this process. In the Microsoft SQL Server 2008 R2 program group, we have an Analysis Services folder that contains a single item, the deployment wizard. When this wizard is launched, we're prompt for the location of the AS database file. That means we've had to do the database build from bits to get that file generated. Then we're led through a series of pages where we can provide information about our deployment. For example, we're first prompted for the installation target. So here we put the server name where we want to send the database, and we can even give the database a new name. Then we need to decide what to do about partitions and security. Partitions are just subsets of our measure group. Partitions are available only in Enterprise Edition. For Standard Edition, each measure group will contain one and only one partition. But if we're using Enterprise Edition, and if we've defined multiple partitions, then we need to instruct analysis services about what we want to do about the new partition definition that we're deploying. If, for example, we already have the database deployed and we're just updating the existing database, we can completely overwrite the existing partitions and replace them with the partitions in our new database definition. Or, we can instruct analysis services to keep the partitions that it already has and only add in new partition definitions for any new measure groups that are coming in this current database definition. Then from a security perspective, we have role-based security, which we'll learn more about in the next module. So with this first option, we can completely replace any roles that have already been defined. Or, if we have an existing database, we can instruct analysis services to keep the existing roles and add any new roles that we've defined in this current database. Or we can tell analysis services to ignore any role information that's contained in the current database and to keep the roles as they're already defined on the server. Then we have a set of configuration properties. Again, if we had an existing database, we can tell analysis services to keep any configuration and optimization settings that have already been specified on the server. Now it's very common for development purposes to get our data from a development database, but during deployment we can use the deployment wizard to change the connection string to point to our production server's data. We can also take this opportunity to change the impersonation information. Remember that impersonation defines which account gets used to connect to our relational source during processing. Here we have it set to default, but we can also configure the default impersonation information, which again is set to default. And in this case, that means look to see what's defined on the server already for this particular database. If it's the first time that the database has been deployed, then the default is to use the analysis services service account. Then we have configuration related to error logging. If analysis services runs into problems with processing key columns, either for the cube or individual dimensions, it can log that information to a file. So we can just click on any of the boxes here to identify the path and file name for those log files. Now, in the previous demonstration, we saw where Analysis Services stores our cube and dimension data. We can override that location here. And then we have the processing options. We can choose to, just like within the project properties, we can choose default processing, full processing, or no processing. And we can choose whether or not processing occurs as part of a single transaction. Now the next page of the wizard, which is not shown here, will ask us whether we want to create a deployment script. That deployment script is simply an XMLA file with instructions to the server about our database objects and what kind of processing to perform. Essentially, for deployment purposes, the developer can use this wizard to generate a script and then hand the script to an administrator who would then execute that script on the server.